Welcome back. We're exploring crime and punishment from our Christian perspective. And our next story plums the depths of the debate through the eyes of a woman who happens to be the mother of a convicted murderer. Here's Patricia Patty. As families go, the Kent family was picture perfect. Well, he was born five years after I married Jean Kent, and we were so thrilled. He was a little boy with a sparkle in his eye, and in one of his early pictures he has on a sailor suit, and he did indeed grow up to be in the Navy. He always loved the water. When he got into high school, he made his parents proud. He was president of the National Honor Society, and he had a real heart to do things that mattered with his life. It was a life filled with promise. But it all evaporated when Jason became convinced his new wife's first husband posed a grave danger to his family, and Jason took matters into his own hands. The facts of the case were confirmed. Our son had indeed pulled a trigger in a public parking lot. A murder happened. Our, our son had shot a man, and there were multiple witnesses, and it was so unlikely, and we were literally in shock realizing that something had happened that would forever change our lives. Jason was convicted of first-degree murder in a Florida court and given a life sentence with no possibility of parole. It means that he will die in a prison, and so it, it is the rest of his life, which uh, is pretty hard for this mom to, to ever get a grip on, to think that my son will never walk in freedom again. Jason was beaten terribly during his first week in jail, and I was at home and got the call, and I sat at my desk and I heard this horrible cry come out of me, and I said, God, I cannot do this journey. I can't, I can't watch my boy suffer like this. And I say to every, every person watching us today that when you are the most needy, God is the most present. Her book, Between a Rock and a Grace Place, records her experience of God's presence in the midst of pain. I like to think of what we are going through right now as an adventure, that God will surprise us with the adventure of new opportunities. I never would have started a nonprofit organization to benefit inmates and their families if my son weren't incarcerated. It's called Speak Up for Hope. Its purpose? To provide hope to inmates and their families through encouragement and resources. Most prisoners are extremely lonely. My son would tell you that a lifer like him, who will never get out, gets visits for an average of five years before no one comes anymore. No one cares at all. It's, they're like the forgotten members of society. And often, inmates are looked at with disgust, like if you hadn't done something wrong, you would not be here. And so often, many times, there are stricter and stricter penalties. And I've discovered that in the states, we tend to focus much more on longer and more severe punishments than we do on rehabilitation. And uh, it, obviously, with life without parole sentences, it's like throwing hope away, saying that you can never, ever be good enough to earn your freedom. And I've discovered that God is close to the brokenhearted. And I've discovered that in my weakness, that my faith has grown stronger than it had ever previously been. And I've, I've developed an outlook that is beyond this world. Because of my faith, I don't believe that the end of my life is the end of my life. I believe that there is a hereafter and that there will be a time when Jason and Jean and I will walk in freedom together. For Listen Up, I'm Patricia Patty. When we return, what does the Bible say about crime and punishment? We'll find out in The Wrap. <laughs> 